Hello fellow travelers, my name is SG and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be doing a quick review on a YouTube original called Scooby Doo Where Are You in Spring Trapped by a YouTuber known as Egan Tillman. This is a short independent film that he did by himself and I really enjoy it so, um, so I want to add my two cents to it. But before we start I would like to thank all of you for my last video. It reached over 500 views. And, um, yeah, let's get started, shall we? Alright, let's start with the animation. Now, as some of you will know, the animation is a bit robotic. It's stiff. But this is an aesthetic that's chosen on purpose. Because it is meant to mimic the original Scooby-Doo Where Are You TV series. And if you watch those old episodes, you can see that they are of themselves stiff and robotic enough to make you um he does a great job mimicking the original shaggy scooby and the rest of the gang's movement from the original cartoon series so that's what makes this so unique and different but at the same time nostalgic you can also tell the animation style takes a lot of inspiration from old school rankin bass cartoons such as um, santa claus is coming to town and uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeers, you know, animations like that, because that's just you, how you can um, associate it with. It's a combination you really wouldn't expect to work because they're two different styles of animation. Even the way Springtrap moves, moves like the old Scooby-Doo villains, because they were always trying to depict them as either very uh, menacing or creepy, crawling around corners, and then they would often look very goofy when chasing either Scooby or Shaggy because their movements were, were stiff. They were very robotic, but that was the charm of that Scooby-Doo series, you know? The old school way of animation they used to uh, have to pull. The animation overall is very robotic, but very energetic. It has a lot going on and has a lot of heart in it. And you could tell that this is definitely meant to be an homage or um, something similar to that. And it's easy for you to get into and pretty much just accept that this is the way it looks and it acts. Because it's a Scooby-Doo project while at the same time trying to be a Five Nights at Freddy's project. The story takes place on Scooby's birthday where the gang is deciding to have his birthday party at a location we all have come to know as Freddy Fazbear's. When they arrive, they find out that it's closed almost an hour earlier than it should be. There we meet an unknown security guard who claims that the restaurant shouldn't be closed because it still has a little while to go and he's not inside yet. From there, we continue the inv they continue to investigate Freddy Fazbear's location and try to figure out who it is inside the animatronic or if it's really haunted as they say. The premise really is set up like an old school Scooby-Doo Where Are You cartoon. Um, you would see something similar to this um, at the time of someone in a really complicated costume trying to scare people away from a location whether it's because they're a realtor or they're trying to sell off some land somebody else owns. It's actually really surprising how well this worked with the Five Nights at Freddy's location, but it really did. We see several tropes come back into this episode, such as the run cycle, the uh, outsmarting of the main bad guy, aka Springtrap, uh, Velma losing her glasses, and so on and so forth, such like that. Ultimately leading to an unmasking of our main antagonist, which should not have been shocking it turns out to be William Afton from Five Nights at Freddy's fame or the purple guy as some have come to know him there are so many references to both the Scooby-Doo franchise and to the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise that it take me a long time to um, look it all over it would take several views of the video to just catch them all so for right now I'm just going to list all the ones I know of uh, if I miss any, please feel free to comment down below on what you've seen and what I may have missed. I'm really interested in seeing uh, all the detail that was put into this. Thank you. 
The first reference we'll note is the first reference that's given, and that is that the intro sequence is almost a scene for scene um, recreation of the original Scooby Doo, Where Are You? Of course, not exactly, but it does have a lot of the same references from the show. And I do appreciate that we do see a lot of the ghosts and we do see a lot of the scenes and a lot of the gags from the original show, which is neat and is really interesting to see in this art style. And um, yeah, I really did enjoy that little um, reference that he made. All the music chosen for this video can be directly from the original show, which is enjoyable. Even when the run sequence happens, they chose that very like pop-like song um, of that era and it does fit with what Scooby-Doo would have as they would have these um, cycles happening so it's very funny very very um, to character with the show and offers like a more energetic scene than what we have had up to that point the security guard they meet like right outside Freddy Fazbear's Pizza obviously is wearing a Freddy Fazbear security guard uniform which is purple because for a long time everybody thought that the security guard was purple guy and we've pretty much accepted as the community that the main security guard uniform for F Freddy Fazbear's is purple so it's a nice touch and gives like a little more um, identity to the uh, lore the closing doors and the monitoring system that's used inside the Freddy Fazbear's restaurant is uh, almost an identical rep recreation from the first Five Nights at Freddy's game um, it's very well done, it looks like it flows well, and it's a funny detail that they add in there. And really just completes that the, in this world, Freddy Fazbear is a thing and you still have to keep an eye on this. Uh, all these animatronics and such. When Shaggy and Scooby do leave the gang to go look for pizza, you can see that um, Shaggy's whistling the same song uh, that will play as soon as you run out of power at the night, end of the night. And uh, the little uh, tune when Freddy's about to jump out and uh, get you. That's a very funny touch and uh, it sounded very good. During the chase sequence, if we look in the background, we can see um, the crying pictures of the puppet. Or um, just the crying pictures from FNAF 1. It's a rare image that like does happen every so often, I believe. And that like it's a neat touch to add that in there when the Shaggy and Scooby are running from... A spring trap um, doesn't don't really know what that will do to the story but it's just a fun Easter egg to throw in there and uh, it is creepy to have it in there when spring trap has cornered Scooby and uh, Shaggy they are trying to hide as animatronics and you see Scooby wearing a little Freddy Fazbear hat and you see uh, Shaggy wearing the Chica beak along with the bib um, it doesn't really add to the story, but it just, you know, goes along with the gags that the original Scooby gang would do. Like when hiding from, um, somebody chasing them, they would wear, like, um, to try to trick the main bad guy. So it's a funny little, uh, add-on to that. And we don't really see Freddy or Chica in this, but that kind of suggests that they might be in there somewhere. So that just adds to this overall story. At the beginning and at the end, we do get a picture of... Uh, Henry Emily and William Afton as being uh, partners It's funny that like they actually name Henry Emily because that's something that like a dedicated fan would know Not really anybody would know off the bat because you need to follow the Freddy Fazbear lore to actually like know Henry's last name and Then at the very end we get William Afton's face reveal and the fact that he's purple making it seem that he is the purple guy just adds to more of the lore and adds to the like craziness of the original show and it's a really good touch um this was a fun view for everyone if you're a scooby-doo fan and if you're a uh, FNAF fan you'll pretty much enjoy all the little easter eggs references and the goofs they do so it's enough to please everyone in this situation I really love this video overall. You can tell that a lot of attention was put into detail from both of the properties that were presented here. It was very interesting, it was very fun, very lighthearted. Um, didn't go too much on the Five Nights at Freddy's side, didn't go too much on the Scooby Doo side. And as a fan of both, you can definitely get into it. You can watch it over and over again and find something new every time. 
which is very um, unique and different for a fan project like this. You can tell that this is taking more off of the uh, Five Nights at Freddy's 1, which is funny because Springtrap wasn't really, really in that one, but it worked in an odd way that you could buy William Afton as trying to just ruin the Five Nights at Freddy's uh, locations and that they are pretty much just a crooked businessman trying to ruin it. It's fun. You can buy it and it does mesh well. If I didn't know any better, I would think that this was an actual video done by either uh, Five Nights at Freddy's or done by Scooby-Doo. It kind of reminds me of the old Cartoon Network bumpers that would be on during like the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, where they would do like small jokey bits. Kind of like the Scooby-Doo project where it was a mix of Scooby-Doo and the Blair Witch. Or something along those lines. It definitely had heavy vibes of that, but it was interesting, it was fun, and it has a rewatch value that like can go on for a little bit longer. I definitely recommend this to anybody who enjoys Five Nights at Freddy's, Scooby-Doo, or is just in the mood for a goofy video. Um, please check out his uh, video. I will put a link to the original video down below in the description section. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again for my Peach Creek review for reaching past 500. And I hope to see you again next week with another review. Have a good day and see you next time.